You right guys? Hey what's up everyone? Welcome to our grass system class. Now we're gonna be showing you, you the design of a system which is intended to produce grass. Be it for feeding cows, feeding chicken or feeding whatever you want to feed with grass. Um, I have by my side one of the best grass producers from Brazil. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him talk a bit about um, what we're planting here, what kind of grass, All and right. what you do with your grass. Why it's so important to you that you, you know, it's really a very um, careful um, planting Word. of the grass. And mm -hmm. and you know, I think most people, if they saw us planting grass like this, they would go, "What? Are you, you really you treat grass so so well?" Um, so tell us a bit about. Yeah, we really, we really take care of it as if it was a veg, you know, it's really important for me because, you know, it pays off. If I had to buy hay, you know, and I have, a, I have a 20 horses in, in six hectares. So basically, I really need to make the most of my grass. I really need to make miracle here uh, in this space to feed my 20 horses. And uh, so when we don't have the grass, we have to buy it. So I really see it uh, as a profit to plant it, you know, it's like... I compare it to, to tomatoes, you know, I need to plant tomatoes, I need to plant grass because it's economically it pays off for me. So we really take a lot of care with it, right? Uh, we see, you know, I really opening the beds with my hand. I really want to look after it. And we're going to do a little secret super segment later where I'm going to show you more grass techniques. But basically here we're, we've gone ahead with plant the guinea grass, right? That, that we've seen in other areas. The guinea grass, uh, very powerful uh, with, with mass production, really powerful and one of the most, well, the most important quality, the biggest quality it has in our system, the guinea grass, is that it stands in the shade, it, it, you know, it accepts shade. So that's really important for me because this is going to become a forest, right? So what we go ahead and do, for me there's one grass which is, which is which I love more than the guinea grass, which is the elephant grass. We have the purple and the green. The purple's got a little bit more protein. I love that one as well, but we always, you know, we plant what we have uh, best on the day. So this is the green um, elephant grass. And the point of planting this is because while there is sun, while we've not shaded it, this will give me the most amount of, of mass. So in the beginning, we, we, we're harvesting guinea and we're harvesting elephant you know, it's got, it's got good amounts, up to 12, 14% protein, the elephant grass, the purple one, and the green about 9%. Uh, so what we, we go ahead and do, we, we plant it in the borders, right? We, we go ahead and stick it in the borders, right? And I like to have two stems in the soil and one out the soil. So we just get that, that root production there and we get that nice sprout from, from the stem that's outside the soil. So we've got two in the soil and one out and we give it a fresh cut there. So we've got three stems, right, in every little stick. And we plant them in the border. It doesn't compete with what's going on in the middle. It really just competes with the corridor. It really blocks off that corridor. And you know, we're not gonna be walking in here that often. We're only gonna come in when, when we're actually cutting the elephant grass. So we're, we're opening the corridor again so we can come in and harvest this elephant grass, right? Yeah, that's great. And well, obviously, once again, you, you, you know it by now, we're not only planting grass here because we never only plant one thing, right? So we're taking the opportunity to produce some grains. So we've got corn and beans. Uh, one thing that I, I, I find it really interesting is that I can't think of planting grass without planting grains. And I cannot think of planting grains without planting grass. Because really, um, the grass is the perfect weed for grain production. So it's no wonder that even um, conventional producers, they already understood this and they plant, when they plant grains, they don't plant grains only. You know, corn product producers, right, maize producers, they mostly plant a grass with it, right? So they plant the maize and they plant the grass because the grass is gonna stand and stay as a soil cover after the harvest of the grain and then once you come to the next season of producing grains you can 
incorporate all that grass into the soil and plant grains again. So it's really a perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and uh, one, one thing that I find it really interesting also here in, in the, the, this grass system is that uh, you, it's also the perfect system for moving into food production in two yep. or three years because yep. for food production you really want to have grass in between the trees row as well because these are going to feed your fruit trees so you know you can have citrus you can have banana trees or whatever fruit you you want to have and it's really important to have grass in the middle because other if you don't have something you're going to have weeds all the time that you're going to have to weed or cut and it's much better to have a high productive yeah grass People are coming in and, and you know, they're, they're spraying poison in the corridors of the fruit production to keep it clean. Now that's horrible, man. I mean, we, we like to plant the grass. It's, it's our service plant for the trees. Uh, and this is the large scale system, really. This is the most effective large scale system for, for agroforestry. Grass in the middle, the guinea grass in the shade. And you come in with your tractors and people have adapted machinery now where you come in with your tractor and it's cutting the grass and it's already throwing it onto the side onto the tree beds all right so it's just large scale tractors feeding feeding that and then really get that matter onto your on your tree beds yeah it's really the substitute the perfect substitute for glyphosate i wouldn't even say it as a it's a substitute but i'm, I'm gonna say you know it it um it does the same job but better so it's hmm. not really a substitute it's better it right because it, 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 it promotes life um, you're feeding the soil you're preventing all of the weed competition and you're cycling organic matter you're covering the soil you're improving your, your soil structure you're cycling nutrients you're doing more photosynthesis in the area you know that means the more humidity working. The roots yeah. are working, they're interacting with the roots exactly. of the trees. Exactly. Now, we've spoken about producing grass to benefit the trees, producing grass to benefit uh, the grains. You know, you can have this grass and you can have it in rows like grain, grass, grain, grass. And we can be chopping that grass and feeding the grain. Chopping. I even done it with onions. I had, you know, but you've got to be really sharp with this. You've got to be, you can't let it, you can't let it run away. You've got to be really making regular cuts, every 20 day cuts, and really feeding the onion, feeding the onion. But this is real, real labor, but it's something that you get different quality onion on that. Exactly. Uh, so we're talking about planting grass to benefit other things. But I'm talking about, in my case here, planting grain to benefit the grass, because you know, grass is my main product here. So, you know, you want to see good grass. I, like, I love planting the corn, I know, with no plans of harvesting the corn just to have the corn you know just to, that healthy competition with the grass and it's all coming up it's all coming green and that first cut before I even get the grains of the corn you know two months later that first cut give it all back give it all back so I've cut the corn what I've done I've created a, a root structure for the corn and then you know I've killed it there and, and I've left that structure underneath for, for the animals to feed on and I've got all that matter and I gave it back and then you see the boom boom grass. So really I love planting grains and giving it a cut, feeding it all back and then we see the boom boom grass. Because you know, if we're exploring and exploring, you know, I'm always cutting and taking to the animals, cutting and taking to the animals. So it has a tendency of, of weakening. So I need to cut it and give it back as well. We have an understanding that let's say one third of the matter that you steal needs to come back minimum so you could work with a system where every every third cut you you return it right i've got a system where i get i get i get all the material from the barn which is basically the vet the grass you know they've, they've gone ahead they've, they've done the poo poo and we're bringing that back that basically that processed grass and i'm giving it back this way you know it's got more more bacteria it's got more information it's more complex after it's being digested so i'm bringing back that grass from the barns. But really, you gotta, if, you, if you're exploring the grass, every third cut, I really recommend that you leave it there. If you let the animals come in, you know, further down the line, three years later, 
or the trees are big, or you've decided to put a shock, electric shock, and you want to let the animals come in early, it's important to always give back. So don't let the animals, you know, graze until it's, it's on the ground. You really need to let the animals graze until it's a third tall. And then you come in with, you, with your machinery and you cut that third and you give it back. Right? You, you, you agree with that? Certainly agree with that. You know, it really, it really is so important when you let your animals come in, you know, don't let them just skin the thing. Let them eat and then they move on to the next and you come in with your zoom, zoom. Yeah, definitely. If you have a, a you know, a, a, a well-developed uh, system of pastures for the animals, um, you really, if you're doing a good work, your animals are never going to be able to eat all the grass you have. So, you know, from time to time, at least one, twice a year, actually you're going to have to cut the whole grass. You're not, the animals are not going to be able to graze it. You know, each pasture, sometimes you're going to cut everything, you know, the whole grass and put it back because during the time, you know, the season of, of, of um, high, high production, you know, during summer, um, during spring, when grass is really going to boom, you're going to have so much grass around that your animals are not going to be able to graze everything and you're going to be returning that. And it's, that, that's what, what really improves mm -hmm. pasture and you can really have um, grazing systems which improve the soil and not deplenish the soil <laughs> like, like people usually think. People um, automatically dream. associate um, cows or animals with soil degradation. That's completely not true. If that were true, then all the, the land on earth would be completely uh, lost already because animals have been there for millions yeah. of years, what, what, much more than we do, we have. And that hasn't happened, so uh, but it's it has really been a matter happening of where people are not, not giving it the, the treatment. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a matter of how you you manage the animals. And now let's bring back a, a concept that we, we explored, right? That the idea of stratification. The nice thing, I think, you can really understand here how we created a system, a stratified system, right? We've got corn as an emergent plant, and then we've got elephant grass which is going to be a high layer plant and then we've got beans and guinea grass underneath so we've got a perfect three to four strata system and so we're really optimizing photosynthesis in every way possible so we're basically producing more food in the same area right we're optimizing the resources we have um, so i hope you enjoyed it and uh, this is our grass system really grass is the plant that recovers soil. We, we have to plant grass everywhere to feed our forests and to grow our forests. As you can see, we've got a grass, we've bought it from, from external. You know, this is a new system, we have to bring it from outside. And we've, we've covered the corridors with grass as well. Exactly. You know? It's not a, you know, this material will disappear very quickly but then, you know, hopefully we've produced matter here, which we can feed the corridors with that matter, these bananas and, and eucalyptus in the nearby tree rows, you know. So we've got to really be, this is just a starter kit. You can use the grass for a starter kit, you know, to cover your soil and cover your corridors as well. Grass exactly. is amazing. So that's it, people. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can use some of this um, experiences we shared with you at your home, at your farm or at your garden or whatever that is um yeah let's talk I'll about it in the webinar exactly don't so forget the webinar let's talk about it see you next time from the agroforestry academy crew sign out